Now that we have some assets that players can use, let's see how they can interact with these assets so they can <laughs> actually use them. So in this video, we are going to see how we can manually give assets to players and how we can retrieve the player's inventory data so that we can display the assets that players have in the actual game. So you can see that we have now an inventory that players can interact with so that can, they can access the, the assets. So let's get started. So here we are on the Loot Locker's dashboard and as we know, the first thing that we are going to do is to select our game. To get access to the player's inventory, we go to players, the player option here on the left side of the screen. And we are going to have a list of all the players that we have available. You can see that I have many here that was basically just test players. And uh, uh, a small tip here, if you want to make a dummy player so that you can test some stuff you can actually change the authentication changing the key that you are passing at the player's identifier key on the, the request body so for instance i have this one here but you can give whatever name you want just, just make sure that it is a string and you have some control over this player this can be something like dummy let's use dummy for this video so i will log in Login successful. Let's go back to our dashboard. I will refresh this page and you can see that there we have the dummy player. Let's view this. So you can see that there are no items for this dummy player. Let's go back to the game. You can see that we are going, we are trying to retrieve some assets from the, the dummy inventory, but we have none. Uh, let's go back to the main page let's give them some asset so the way that you can manually give assets to players is just by clicking on this give asset button here and select which asset you want to give to this player so let's say this arrow mouse and if we go back to the game i would go to the skins here and there we have it we have the, the skin the arrow mouse skin here and this is how we manually give assets to a player. So let's say we receive a payment through PayPal, for instance, if we have a small amount of players and we want to, to give them some asset, this is how we do that. But as we, we are going to see in the next video about triggers, there is ways to automate this process. Don't, don't be worried, you don't have to do this manually. So let's see now how this works on the Godot side. How Godot pick up this, this information, this data, and recreate the asset on the players, on the client side, on the player side of this relationship. But first of all, let's see the API that we are going to need to use in order to retrieve this data. So let's go there. So here I am on the Loot Lockers API, and to get the player's inventory is quite simple. We just have to make an HTTP request to this URL using the get method. And we are going to get, as a response from the server, uh, a JSON file with two keys. So a success key if we successfully retrieve the player's inventory, and an inventory key which is an array in which each element is a dictionary with all the asset information, with all the asset data. So we can see that here we have the, the asset key. So let's see how we can use this information, how we can use this data and process it in Godot Engine. So this is the same scene that we used in the previous video, but now we are going to enter into the inventory screw container script. So let's open that. And you can see that I already have this load skins method, which basically does the same thing that the previous one does, but with some difference. For instance, we have the, the uh, a different URL. You can see that I'm using the, the one that we just saw in the API. So player slash inventory slash list. On the header, we are making sure that we are using the X session token that we can access through the loot locker singleton, uh, a get method, and making a request using the URL header, uh, false because we don't want SSL certification, and the method that we just set. Then we use for the response and convert it, parse it from a JSON file so that it converts into a dictionary. And then we run through each asset in the response that we just saw that is an array, right? So each element of the array is an asset data. Then for each one of these assets, we access the, the asset key that we just saw that it's one of the keys from this dictionary. It sounds a bit confusing. I could use other names here, but let's stick to it. And then on the asset, uh, on the asset key, which is a, a dictionary as well, we have the files key that, that gives us asset, 
access to the files that we uploaded. Remember on the previous video that to create a, an asset, we uploaded some files using the LootLockers dashboard? This is uh, the, the URL that these files are hosted. So we access the, the scene URL because uh, we uploaded a scene file and this scene file is not on the player's version of the game to prevent them from making weird stuff with this file. And we are going to host it on the loot locker server and we are using this to retrieve this asset, retrieve this file from the loot locker server and recreate this on the player's side, on the player's machine. So to do that, we need to know which is the URL that this file is hosted. Then we have the image URL as well. If you remember in the previous video, you know why we need that. And then we create a new skin button using this, this information, using this data. So this skin button will use the, the data that we just gathered. And we are going to connect its pressed signal to this skin button pressed. This is actually important. So let's see how this works. We request we make an, an HP request to this uh, URL to retrieve the scene from the loot locker server, and then we use for the response. Mainly, I delete a skin file that is on the player's machine to prevent uh, weird corruption on the file. So I remove it completely and I recreate this file using the data that we just gathered as a response from this request here, and then I set the current skin to no to prevent any weird interaction and then i said i load this scene from the the file that we just created using the the file that we retrieved from this hp request here and load it as a package scene resource to this skin singleton and then we emit this skin selected signal so this is how this whole inventory works and if we give another uh, another asset to our player so let's give it to, let's actually see this in real time. Play, we just entered, play this, skins loaded. So we just have this skin. Let's give this area sent to this player, asset granted. Let's go back and update this. And there we have it. So I can select this, load it, and there I have. So this is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. In the next one, in the next video, we are going to see how we can automate the process of actually giving players assets. So for instance, we can create an event in the game, let's say for, on Munchiza, for instance, when players reach uh, 1000 points, they are granted a special skin so that they can use and celebrate this achievement. And we are going to see how we can do that using triggers. So I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and to the next one.